So the thing that really makes these things different, um, or special, as the headstock says, uh, it is a five-way blade switch, three pickup guitar. That's fairly self-explanatory. And two mini toggles, which, um, you know, the, the words split and tap, people often use interchangeably, but as most people know, that doesn't mean the same thing. And people give me a hard time when I say it's a tap, when it really is a tap. And on, on YouTube, they're like, I think you mean coil split, because taps are different. I'm like, I know what it means. Paul told me what to say. But um, um, <laughs> So... These are, these are the 5815 pickups, which are typically split. When you get them in, in, a, in a, a 5815 or you get them something like that, they are true coil split, where one, one coil is completely ground out. Um, in this, uh, these are the 5815 MTs, multi-tap is what it stands for. So it is tapping into the windings of the other coil. So what, that ha what happens in that case is when you go to the single coil sound, it doesn't get fully, like it doesn't get quite as thin as a regular single coil and you don't lose the volume. So, um, obviously a full character change. So that's the single coil sound. I mean, you can obviously hear the difference. To me, the single coil sound is still, it's like, it sounds almost like a bright P90. It's a little bit chimier than a typical P90, but it's got that kind of, that girth and fatness that isn't typical of a single coil. Um, so the, the design of this kind of came from the same way that, you know, the, the 408 and the Paul's guitar, where the idea was to have all these different sounds, but where the outputs of them are very even. Um, I remember... Do, when I did the 408 demo video when that guitar first came out, that was part of the whole point of that guitar. The pickups, you know, were different widths to pick up. So the whole, every output, like the bridge pickup was thicker than normal. The neck pickup wasn't as bassy. So like all of your outputs were very even in, in tonal character and frequency response and output level. Um, that was the whole point of it, you know, and it sounded great. And this guy bought one and came to the PRS experience when I was demoing him. And he goes, yeah, I got that 408 and... um when I go to the single coil sound, it's, um, it just doesn't really get as thin and plinky as I, I like it to. And I'm like, uh, well, you know, you can uh, maybe try one of the other guitars that, you know, has a regular single coil because, you know, that was kind of the, the problem they were trying to combat, the people who didn't want that. And then we figured out that if you just rolled, the, I was like, well, have you tried rolling the volume back when you go to single coil sound? And he's like, oh, that sounds amazing. I love it. Now. So, you know, it's, you know, it, it was a little strange that he used the, the whole marketing premise was, the polar opposite of what he wanted the guitar to do. And uh, I think he forgot to watch the video maybe before he bought it. But, um, um, so this thing has a million tones. That middle pickup is that narrow feel. So the switches up give you the, the single coil. Down you get the, the full humbucking. Uh, the beauty about this switching that you find here, you find it on the 408, the Paul's guitar, um, you know, push-pull on the tone pot is fine. Um, you can do this on this because they're separate, but you can s separate these if, with a single, with a two-knob guitar uh, without putting a push-pull on the volume too, which might be a little awkward for some people, you might knock it back down. You can set them separately, obviously. You can have a humbucking bridge with a neck single coil or vice versa and, you know, get tones that you couldn't get otherwise with just a single push-pull, you know, where it splits the, the coils evenly without going in and rewiring it, and, you know. Um, uh, the, um, probably one of the most versatile setups on any of the guitars I have. Um, upon looking at it, does it r remind anybody of any other models that came out in the past couple of years that only, there were only 100 of them and they cost $10,000 and you can't get them now if you want? Yeah, right. So, I mean, it's kind of like a, a Super Eagle, if you, if you like that vibe. It doesn't have the, the onboard preamp, but um, it really does have a very similar uh, character to it. Um, they're, they're really, really amazing guitars. And as far as I know, once they're, the order window is closed, right? So what you have is what you have. You know, the new one. Now, this is a wood library run, so those are Karina. Uh, Look at that. Yes. The other five had maple necks. Yeah, that's gorgeous. 